Depending on the operation and the material handling requirements of your specific environment, you must dress appropriately and use all necessary personal protective equipment. The National Safety Council and FLI Learning Systems Incorporated present Coaching the Lift Truck Operator, Operator Safety. The Coaching the Lift Truck Operator program has been designed for individuals like yourself who already know the basics of operating a lift truck. This video will focus on accident avoidance techniques that, if followed, can help reduce lift truck related injuries and property damage. A defensive approach to operating your truck is the key to your safety and the safety of others. Throughout the coaching program, you will play an active role. Using information from this video presentation and your own operating experience, you will participate in structured discussions, apply operating techniques to response book situations, and analyze the preventability of actual lift truck accidents. You will participate in hands-on training. As you know, there are many elements involved in the safe operation of a lift truck. To be a safe operator, it's important to be effective and efficient in all of them. For example, knowing the safe operating procedures for traveling with a load, but not knowing how to perform a pre-start safety inspection properly just doesn't make sense. Pre-start safety inspection. Now let's turn our attention to inspecting the truck. If you ask, why should we inspect our lift truck? The answer may be, because it is required. That's technically correct. However, from the operator's standpoint, it's also for your own protection and that of other workers. They're counting on you. Regardless of your level of experience, you need a safe lift truck to operate safely. Trucks must be inspected before each shift. In order to perform an adequate safety inspection, remember to use your checklist, checking off each item one at a time. Also, depending on the truck you will be inspecting, the location and function of controls may vary. Refer to the truck's manual for specifics. Don't get complacent. Check each item. Inspect the carriage and mast. Inspect the forks and locking pins. Inspect the ID plate with the capacities. Take note of the load limitations. Check the seat safety restraint system. If the truck has a safety belt, check that it is in good condition. Inspect the overhead guard. Check the steering for excessive play and all other controls. Test the horn and make sure all of the lights are operational. Inspect all gauges, making sure any readings are up to specification. Test the operation of the lift, checking that the lift is responsive and operational for each movement. Test the brakes, both moving forward and in reverse. Also test the parking brake. If you find any defect during your inspection or while you are operating the truck, that truck shall be taken out of service until the defect is corrected. Design considerations. Modern material handling requires the use of many types of equipment, equipment that changes as new technology is developed. Today, there are many lift trucks designed for specific tasks. 
such as operating in narrow aisles. Order picking. Or working in hazardous locations. Only approved industrial trucks shall be used in hazardous locations. The lift truck must be compatible with the work environment and material handling requirements. Also, the proper protective equipment must be used for the operating environment. It is important to know and follow your organization's policy regarding protective equipment. One piece of protective equipment that should not be ignored is the seat safety restraint system. If your truck has a safety belt, use it. A safety belt can reduce your chances of being injured. Using it not only makes sense, but the policy of your organization mandates that you use the protective equipment that is provided. Many safe operating requirements are the same regardless of the type of lift truck you operate. Making sure your load is stable, lowering the forks before moving the load, and scanning ahead into the sides as you travel. For a sit-down type lift truck, a cornerstone of safe operation is what is referred to as the stability triangle. Your understanding of this concept is key to the safe operation of your lift truck. The stability triangle is directly related to the three-point suspension system of the lift truck. Take a look at a diagram of the three-point suspension. As you can see, the three points form a triangle. When your lift truck is unloaded, the center of gravity is here. When loaded, the center of gravity shifts forward like this. Remember, if the center of gravity moves outside this triangle, your truck will tip to either side or forward. Contributing factors include, but are not limited to, traveling with the load raised, a load not centered on forks, traveling too fast around corners, making sharp turns, traveling across an incline, overloads, and sudden starts and stops. Another key operating principle to remember is any time the load is raised while traveling, the truck becomes less stable. You should keep the load as low to the ground as possible. How low? For the purpose of this instruction, we will say about four inches from the ground. Remember though, you will have to scan the area where you are traveling for differences in floor and ground surfaces. The next time you operate your truck, try to visualize this center of gravity. The more the center of gravity moves outside the stability triangle, the less stability you have. Stability is key to operating any type of lift truck. Another consideration that is common to all trucks and is critical to safe operation is the weight your truck can pick up safely. You must know and adhere to the load capacity for the specific truck you are operating. Don't guess on the load capacity of your truck. What is the best way to check it? You don't have to be an engineer. Each lift truck has an ID plate that specifies the load capacity. If for some reason the truck you operate does not have one, Notify your supervisor who will contact the manufacturer or supplier for this important information. And do not use that truck until you know its capacity. Why is load capacity important? If the load increases beyond capacity, the rear end of the lift truck will actually lift up, adversely affecting your ability to brake and steer. And, depending on the height of the load from the floor, the truck can tip completely forward. Regardless of your operating experience, you will not be able to correct the situation once the truck begins to tip. In addition to understanding the stability triangle and load stability, you must also consider the position of the forks. To ensure stability, you should match the width of the forks to your load by actually adjusting the forks. For example, on this lift truck, you would raise the forks off the surface, release the fork locks, adjust each fork to the correct width, and lock the forks. Even with pressure to get the job done, it's important that you know and execute the proper safety procedures. While driving your own personal vehicle, you know how important it is to scan the road ahead.
This is just as essential when operating a lift truck. However, it can be more difficult because the load you are carrying may block your view. This is why driving in reverse is required when your view is obstructed by the load. When operating in reverse, turn partially around so you are looking in your direction of travel. When you do this, keep your entire body inside the lift truck. Hands and feet can get crushed. Even when operating in reverse, you will still have blind spots that even your peripheral vision won't pick up. You must turn your head to look to either side to check these areas. Don't focus on one area. Periodically turn your head to check to the sides. Even if your truck has a warning light or backup alarm, you should still scan the area. A backup alarm, a warning light, or sounding the horn cannot warn a fixed object and none of them may be noticed by others in a busy, noisy environment. Another factor when traveling is compensating for the rear end swing of the truck. Let's watch as this operator moves in a staging area of a warehouse and makes a right turn to load a trailer. The unattended lift truck parked in the staging area creates a hazard for other operators. Think about the safety issues this operator should be considering. Now let's watch again and hear what the driver should have been thinking. This is a staging area, so I'll have to be especially careful. The area looks clear, no pedestrians. I don't have much room to make the turn with the other truck parked there. With my rear end swing, I'll have to be careful. I can't see down the aisle, so I'll sound the horn before I turn and I'll proceed with caution. A quick note about this situation. The driver of the other truck parked his vehicle in a location that made going down the aisle to the right a tight squeeze. Avoid parking a truck anywhere that might make it difficult for others to get around. In addition, never park where your truck will block a fire extinguisher, a fire hydrant, a fire aisle, or exits. An experienced operator should constantly ask himself or herself, am I doing anything that is putting myself or someone else in a hazardous situation? Any moving vehicle requires special training for safe operation. Certainly a lift truck is no exception. However, some workers may think that just because they can drive a car, they should be able to operate a lift truck safely. This is just not true. Not only because of the basic design differences that dramatically affect how a lift truck handles, but also because of the variety of lift trucks, each designed for specific types of jobs. Picking up the load. Now let's discuss safe operating techniques for picking up a load. First of all, only stable or safely arranged loads should be handled. If the load includes hazardous materials, you should go over handling instructions and follow the procedures of your organization. If unstable, the load must be made safe by rearranging, blocking, or banding. Remember to check that the forks or other attachments are adjusted properly and match the load. Begin the task of picking up a load by approaching it straight on, not at an angle. Keep the mast vertical and drive forward until the forks are into the load all the way so the load is resting against the carriage. Lift the load only high enough to clear the surface and then slightly tilt the mast back. Many of the same procedures apply to this electric pallet truck. Making sure that all the items on the pallet are securely positioned. Checking behind the pallet 
to make sure you will not be catching a pallet to the rear. And swinging around to approach the pallet straight on. These basic concepts apply to a variety of special situations. In this case, the operator is working on a narrow aisle reach truck. As he arrives at the pickup site, he stops completely and turns the truck to square up with the pallet before beginning to lift the forks. Never elevate the forks while turning or maneuvering the truck into position. Once at the proper level, he approaches the pallet straight on. He inserts the forks as far as possible by moving his truck before using his reach mechanism. This assures that when he picks up the pallet, his truck will be as close to the load as possible. After picking up the pallet and lifting it only far enough to clear the rack, he first pulls the pallet to his truck and then slowly backs far enough to clear the racks. Then he lowers the pallet all the way down to the proper height before turning and moving with the load. With an order picker truck, be sure to attach your tether strap every time you get on the truck. Do it first thing, so you do not forget it when you're going up to pick an order. Also, always take the time to engage the locking mechanism when you pick up a pallet to give you the most stability and security as you work. Once at a pickup location, do not start to raise the cage until you are fully stopped at the proper location. Stay in the cage as you raise the lift. And if your type of truck requires that you work off the pallet, try to avoid going out to the far end of the pallet as you pick. Straight trucks, tractor trailers, and railroad cars require special attention. When working with these units, your responsibilities go well beyond just unloading or loading. First, be certain that the brakes are set and that the wheels are chopped to prevent movement during loading and unloading. When the tractor is disconnected from the trailer, check that the trailer is supported properly by jack stands under the nose of the trailer to prevent upending. The jack stands should be adjusted so they fit tightly under the frame of the trailer. Where vehicle restraint systems with warning lights are used, the lift truck operator is required to visually observe safe engagement of these mechanisms to make sure the trailer or truck is secured to prevent movement and upending in the case of a trailer during loading and unloading. Don't rely on the lights. Visually check it out. When setting the dock plate, make sure it is secured in place and meets the rated load capacity of the lift truck with a maximum load. Check that there is a smooth surface between the trailer and the dock. You must also check the floor itself for wet areas, weaknesses, or holes. If weaknesses or holes exist, do not enter the area. Even an empty lift truck is heavy enough to go through a weakened floor. In the case of excessive product spills, follow established procedures for cleanup. Most of the same steps apply to a railroad car as with a trailer. You must check that the brakes are set, wheels are blocked, dock plate is secure, forming a smooth joint between the dock and the car or trailer, the floor surface of the car or trailer is in good condition. With a railroad car, you may need bumper blocks or derailers to protect your area of operation. And with a trailer, you may need trailer jacks.
moving the truck with or without a load. While moving, the instruction scan in the direction you are going may seem simple, perhaps too simple. If you are only scanning ahead, spotting the oncoming truck, you are only doing part of your job. Other workers walking or using other equipment may be coming at you from various angles. Experienced operators have learned to glance quickly through racks when coming to an aisle, intersection, blind corner, bins or offices for other material handling vehicles and pedestrians. These operators reduce their speed and proceed with caution or come to a complete stop. You should be alert and ready for the unexpected. Also note that this operator stayed in the center of the aisle to get the best view to both sides and to allow equal maneuvering room on either side. Defensive operation of the truck is the key to your safety and the safety of others. As you approach a corner, slow down, sound the horn, and proceed with caution. Scan in all directions and use any safety mirrors that are available. Since they are usually placed in locations where your view is blocked, it is essential that they be used. However, don't forget that anything that you see in the mirror seems much smaller and farther away than it really is. And remember, the horn is there for a reason. Use it wisely to communicate with others. However, the horn is no substitute for slowing down or stopping and proceeding with caution. Another situation that may test even an experienced operator is operating in a multi-truck area. When traveling behind another lift truck, how far behind should you follow? Your following distance should be at least three truck lengths. Note the term at least. Experienced operators increase their following distance in congested situations. Do you know what a truck length is? A truck length is measured from the front of the forks to the back of the truck. The following distance of at least three truck lengths actually starts from here, the front of the forks, and includes three full lift trucks in distance. What are some situations, other than congestion, where you would increase your following distance to more than three truck lengths? Going down an incline. in less than ideal conditions, where there is moisture, oil, or grease on the surface, or when you are on a gravel surface. On surfaces with reduced traction, slow down. Remember, you are not allowed to pass at any dangerous location, such as at an intersection or at blind spots where the visibility ahead is limited. Because of competing noise, pedestrians may not be able to hear you. With or without other noise, a worker may not hear your approach. Pay particular attention in areas where other workers are present. Warn others of your approach before you reach them by using your horn. Make sure they acknowledge your approach before slowly proceeding ahead. As you're scanning, get in the habit of looking for clues. For example, you first spot a pile of rubbish. Then you see the broom. Now you know that there is a maintenance worker who might walk out in front of you, and you slow down to be ready. Sure enough, the worker does step out. Your scanning should also pick up fixed objects that may present a problem such as a dock plate that is slanted up to reach a trailer, speed bumps, railway tracks, uneven surfaces, the roof of a trailer, overhead doorway sills, sprinkler systems, or piping systems. Some of these hazards are well below eye level and others well above. When you see any of these hazards, your forks must be high enough or the mast or load low enough to clear them. Scanning ahead, this operator sees railroad tracks. He has reduced his speed as he approaches the tracks. Note that the operator approaches the tracks at an angle, the correct technique. Now let's look at an operating area that requires additional safety considerations, a ramp. 
When approaching a ramp, approach it straight, not at an angle. And, as on all grades, keep your speed very low and stay away from the edges of the ramp. When operating with a loaded truck on a ramp, the load should be upgrade. On a rider truck without a load, travel so the forks or lift section are downgrade, so the heavy weight on the back of the truck is upgrade. Avoid parking on a ramp or incline. If you must temporarily stop on an incline, don't forget to chock the wheels. Complete scanning must be incorporated into your driving pattern so that it becomes second nature, even if you operate your truck in the same environment every day. Don't get complacent. The same environment can change as trucks make their deliveries and freight cars arrive and depart, as other operators move skids and pallets of materials to new locations, or as workers working on ladders or scaffolding move from one location to another. Here, the maintenance worker did not protect the area. Being a professional, the operator must compensate for another person's mistake. setting down the load. When you reach the area where you will be stacking the load, what are your safety considerations? Let's watch this operator. Note that he stops the truck and scans the area, especially the area above. And the area where he intends to place the load, in this case a storage rack, safely carry the weight of the load. Despite safety reminders about sprinkler systems, they continue to be mentioned in accident reports. Watch out for the sprinkler system, heaters, or any other overhead obstructions, making sure you maintain adequate clearances. As the operator reaches the proper location, he stops and positions the truck square with the racks while the load is still down. Note that the operator moves slowly to position the load. Abrupt movements can cause product to fall off. By positioning his truck before raising the load, the operator avoids turning the truck while it is less stable because the load is raised. Once the truck is stopped after positioning, the operator raises the load. Never elevate or lower forks while moving, turning, or maneuvering the truck into position. Note that the operator moves the truck in as far as possible before using the reach mechanism to place the pallet fully onto the rack. Minimizing how far the reach mechanism must extend keeps the truck as stable as possible. The final maneuver is retracting the forks and dropping them to within four inches of the ground before turning and moving down the aisle. Once the forks are down, the operator scans ahead and to both sides before moving the truck. When using this electric pallet truck, it is just as important to use safe operating techniques. You will not be placing the load on a high rack, but again, you must follow specific safety procedures. Driving backwards so the load does not block your view. Making sure the pallet is entirely out of the aisle, in this case, behind the yellow line. checking ahead and to both sides for other workers and other trucks as you pull out. And again, sounding your horn to warn others as you reach main aisles. When loading a trailer or railroad car, remember to distribute the weight evenly. If you are loading pallets containing materials of different weights, put the heavier loads on the bottom and the lighter loads on the top. If your load is large enough to block your view and you must travel forward to put the load down, you may need a helper to guide you. Before starting, agree on hand signals with your helper 
signals for moving to one side or the other, raising or lowering the load, and especially a signal for stop. As you can see, the operator moves very slowly and keeps the helper in view at all times. Anytime you lose sight of a helper, stop immediately. As you can see, even with huge loads being placed in a tight space, professionalism, proper training, and following each and every safety procedure gets the job done safely. These safety steps apply in all situations. When setting down the load, the operator does not start to lift the load until his truck is in position, square with the unloading location. Completely stops his truck before starting to lift the load. Sets the load as far into position as possible. In this case, the operator needs a helper to aid in positioning the load because his view is blocked by the load once it is raised. Note that the operator and the helper have agreed on hand signals ahead of time. Once the load is down, scans behind and to both sides before backing up. Drops the forks as soon as he is clear of the load. Now, try to finish this statement. When the lift attachment is down, remain stopped while you look in the direction you want to travel and... The missing words are, scan to both sides. Use your horn if necessary to alert others. Only when you are 100% sure it's clear, are you ready to travel to your next pickup. Coaching the lift truck operator. Visual operator test. You have just been given an answer sheet like the one shown here. During the next few minutes, you will see 10 video situations featuring various lift truck maneuvers. After watching each situation, you will be asked a question. You will answer the question by circling either yes or no on your answer sheet. To get you started, We'll do the first one together. When this operator parked the lift truck, he left the forks resting on the ground. Should the forks be resting on the ground when the lift truck is parked? Yes or no? Go to situation number one on your answer sheet. Circle yes if you think the forks should be resting on the ground, or no if you do not think the forks should be resting on the ground. Please circle your answer now. If you answered yes, you have the correct answer and a good idea of how this video test works. Now let's go on to situation number two. Here a co-worker is riding on the lift truck. Is this permitted? In this situation, if it is okay to allow someone to ride with the operator, circle yes for situation number two. If it is not okay, circle no. In situation number three, the operator's view is blocked by the load, so he is driving in reverse. When the operator's view is blocked by a load, is it the correct procedure to operate in reverse? Circle yes if you should ride in reverse when your view is blocked. Circle no if you should drive forward when your view is blocked. In situation number four, an operator is coming down a ramp and has his load upgrade. 
Is this the correct way to operate with a load on an incline? Circle yes for situation number four if you think it is correct to have your load upgrade when operating on an incline. Circle no for situation number four if you think that your load should not be upgrade when operating on an incline. In situation number five, the operator has picked up a load and is traveling with the forks as close to the ground as possible, about four inches off the ground. Would you travel with this load about four inches from the surface? Circle yes for situation number five if you would travel with the load as close to the ground as possible, about four inches off the ground. Circle no for situation number five if you would travel with the load higher off the ground, at about eye level. In situation number six, the operator will be loading the trailer and is inspecting the floor. Is checking the floor a job for the trailer truck driver, not a job for the lift truck operator? Circle yes for situation number six if you agree that it is the trailer truck driver's responsibility to inspect the floor of the trailer. Circle no for situation number six if you think it is the lift truck operator's responsibility, not the trailer truck driver's, to inspect the floor of the trailer. In situation number seven, the operator is inspecting the lift truck. Should lift trucks only be inspected once a week? Circle yes for situation number seven if you think lift trucks should only be inspected once a week. Circle no for situation number seven if you think lift trucks should be inspected at the start of each shift. In situation number eight, the operator is inspecting the ID plate on this lift truck. If there is no ID plate on a lift truck, should the operator drive the lift truck and report the missing plate at the end of the shift? Circle yes for situation number eight if he should drive the lift truck and report the missing plate at the end of the shift. Circle no for situation number eight if he should report the missing plate to his supervisor immediately and not operate the truck. In situation number nine, the operator is approaching a coworker. The driver sounds his horn to get the coworker's attention. Should the driver proceed before getting the coworker's attention? Circle yes for situation number nine if the operator should proceed before getting the coworker's attention. Circle no for situation number nine if the operator should not proceed before getting the coworker's attention. In situation number ten, the operator will be picking up a load. In addition to following all other safety precautions, should the operator insert the forks into the pallet as far as possible, or should the forks be inserted only part way? Circle yes across from situation number 10 if the forks should be inserted into the pallet as far as possible. Circle no across from situation number 10 if forks should be inserted only part way into the pallet.
The National Safety Council and FLI Learning Systems Incorporated present Coaching the Lift Truck Operator, Pedestrian Safety. All employees need to be aware of the unique characteristics of and the hazards associated with lift truck operation. Pedestrian education is a very important part of a comprehensive accident prevention effort. Since you are not a trained lift truck operator, you may not be aware of some of the difficulties an operator faces. For example, the operator's view may be limited by the load. And competing noise, coupled with the sound of the vehicle itself, may make it difficult for the operator to hear other people in the general area. Also, since the operator's attention is often focused on making sure the load is properly balanced and secure, he or she may not be completely aware of other activity in the area. You may not know that when a lift truck is turning, the back end of the truck initiates the turn, which is called rear end swing. This is just the opposite of your car. And for a person unfamiliar with how a lift truck operates, it may seem somewhat surprising. In addition, lift trucks are required to be operated in reverse when the load blocks the operator's view. Therefore, the driver will be scanning to the rear and sides. If you approach from behind when the driver is turning, the driver may not be able to see you at all. There are a number of other things that you can do to help the lift truck driver operate safely. Follow any in-plant safety instructions. They are posted for your benefit and safety, just as signs are posted on our roadways to help vehicles and pedestrians move safely. Try to walk and work only in designated areas. Avoid taking shortcuts and entering aisles from blind areas. At blind intersections, remember to recheck for a second truck that may be following the first or coming from an opposite location. Before you cross aisles, stop and look both ways. Act as if you are crossing a city street. Although these trucks are very maneuverable, they can't stop on a dime. Use all your senses to assist you in staying clear of lift trucks while walking or performing your work. Don't only rely on sounds. Some lift trucks operate on batteries, and you won't get the warning noise that may come from an internal combustion engine. When you spot a lift truck that has the forks raised, stay clear and avoid walking or even standing under or near the truck. The operator may be so intent on the load that he may not see you walk underneath. Also, material may fall off. The overhead guard on the truck gives the driver some protection. However, should any material fall, you could be seriously injured. Don't leave materials on the floor, in aisles, or in any area that may hinder safe operation of the truck. Remember that good in-plant housekeeping is not just for looks. It is an important safety function. You may hear a lift truck operator use the horn to alert you. This safety message is for your benefit. It is the operator's way of communicating with you. It should not be taken in a negative way. You may see a lift truck being used to lift workers on a safety platform to work overhead. These are specifically designed safety platforms with special safety requirements. Most lift trucks, however, are not designed to transport individuals other than the operator. No one, including a supervisor, should ask an operator to use his truck unsafely. And don't put the lift truck operator in an embarrassing position by asking for a ride. Riders are not permitted in or on any part of the truck. Only those who have been trained and authorized to operate motorized lift trucks are allowed to operate them. You may not operate a lift truck even for short periods without training. If an unattended lift truck must be moved out of an area, don't attempt to move it. Get an authorized operator. To prevent pedestrian injuries, the lift truck driver needs special training. However, you must also do your part. 
This joint effort by all employees is critical. If you are not directly involved in the work of a lift truck, stay away and keep alert. We have covered a number of proper safety considerations. However, it's up to you to apply these guidelines to your specific work environment.